Welcome back. Our next delegate is not only a visual artist, but is also helping prepare our island's senior citizens to show off their artwork during FestPack. Hafide, I'm Monica Baza, and I'm a visual arts delegate for Guam. I'm also a chairperson for the Manomko Artist Delegates for FESPAC. There are 15 of them, and they will first time with all the 27 nations that are coming to Guam display proudly their artwork that they took during our workshop. That's uh, the two instructors and I, the two instructors, I'm one of them. Monica is the daughter of an artist. Her parents met in British Columbia, where her father was serving in the U.S. Air Force. Her love for art started at a young age. It was my father's charcoal drawings that he'd been taking some sort of, I guess, uh, an art class where they start with charcoal drawings, still lifes and all that. I, I just remember looking through his portfolio at a very young age, like five, six years old and being influenced by that. I really was intrigued by the black and white chiaroscuro, all the shading that he would do, that he was doing in his drawings. I was really impressed about that, that he was able to do that. So ever since then, I always wanted to learn how to do that same thing, you know, to draw. From grade school to college, art has always been a part of her life. When deciding to take art seriously, I did take a few, a whole year here on, at UOG, which was, that was a great experience. I got to meet my professors like um, Bob Shinoski and Adriano Pangalinen, as well as um, the Montvel Cohens. There's Kathy Montvel Cohen, who did like a studio, all, you know, it was like, you did all kinds of different studio artwork and three-dimensional design and things like that. From the University of Guam, Monica attended college in Montreal where her sister was living. I had applied to a few or actually just a couple of different art schools that were off-island, uh, one in the west and one in the east. So um, I decided to go to UG while waiting on the responses. So I did get positive responses from both of them, like the Simon Fraser University and also Concordia University in Montreal. So I decided to go towards Montreal with my sister staying there. She was already living there for a couple of years. So that kind of made my decision, okay, I'm gonna go and stay with my sister and not be totally culture shocked because it's really, you know, not only the cold weather and the different people and everything, um, transportation, getting around and, you know, just getting used to being there. It's a totally different life from here. It's so uh, kind of fast paced, I guess, you know. So it makes you really um, look back. You get really homesick for Guam, right? You know, you're, it's just so different that you're like, oh, I, I'd like to go back. I mean, the experience was great, but then I kept thinking of home because it's so different to be on an island. Her specialty is working with linoleum. Yeah, it's like I couldn't think of myself doing anything else. It was one of those things where it kind of, it comes naturally. I mean, my style is, I'm always learning. I don't think of my, you know, like, oh, it's the best or anything like that. That's always nice to have like, an agent to uh, <laughs> describe the artwork for you and you know try and sell the artwork but I just I enjoy that I always come back to the therapeutic what happens when you're in the process of doing the artwork and it's especially like with linolo with the linoleum block prints it seems like you're just you do your plan and you start carving it out, gouging it out, the design. It always changes, because it'll never look like my draw the way I'm drawing it. It's just kind of like indications what area should be more white, you know, light, as opposed to other areas. Um, but I tend to do um, island themes. Um, 
I've worked on some projects where we were showing some uh, informational type pieces that uh, charcoal sketches or pen and ink, mostly charcoal sketches of like the Lati houses and um, just to show for uh, school age students so that they see what it used to look like during the Lati during that time. But I just tend to, um, as far as being influenced, my schooling back in Canada was, it's really just the printmaking process because I didn't do any bas relief um, block printing type. I just did mostly silk screening and etchings and I, everything was available for us. We were able to use all their presses because it's kind of expensive to like get your own press and you know and then it might become uh, I was gonna say it might become obsolete although you know the old ones you can really just continue you can work with those tables all the time but um, I do just stay with a lot of um, island themes even if it's abstract it does, it's not necessarily realistic when I do any paintings as well, you know, so even the block prints aren't quite realistic. I'm always like, oh wow, you know, I admire a lot of other visual artists, their techniques, their work, and you know, it's refreshing to see everyone coming together and seeing all the different artwork that gets to be displayed. It'll be quite a a great show it's like uh, words can't really explain what's gonna what I have picturing you know in my head like all the different countries coming together and showing their artwork it's gonna be several days to be able to like look through all their pieces you know I hope we're able to be able to see everyone and the artists too you know to meet them visual artists yeah. Not only is she excited about her role as a visual artist delegate, but also a chairperson for the Manumco Artist Delegation. There are 15 Manumco artists and they had taken, it was like there was a prerequisite to becoming a Manumco Artist Delegate. It was mostly because they had experienced an art workshop. Um, Philomore Palomo Alcon, and I had gotten together to hold workshops, the art workshops, to teach them how to draw, paint, some um, calligraph printing, all kinds of different methods, and then graduate all the way up to acrylic painting on pre-stretched canvas. Some of them had not really gotten into art before. Some of them had a little bit of you know, drawing skills but um, they've come a long way and they will be ex exhibiting alongside all the delegates in the, hopefully when, if the new museum is done or the venues for the delegates for FestPAC, it'll be there. This will mark Monica's second Festival of Pacific Arts. She attended the FestPAC in Balao, and like other members of Guam's delegation, she is encouraging everyone to attend. I don't know when the next FestPAC on Guam would be. We're like thinking it's about a hundred and something years that it might come back to Guam again. But you know, can you imagine? It's not gonna be in our lifetime. <laughs> so try to make the most of it now, you know, try to make connections and you know, experience that coming together of all these cultures and there's a lot of similarities as well besides the differences, you know, so I'm looking forward to that, meeting and being able to see all the different um, dancers and all the visual arts uh, exhibits and stuff. Still to come on e Historiata, we'll introduce you to one of Monica's students who is preparing to showcase her art during Festpack.